something else here. <laughs> I start talking. Okay. I do start talking now. <laughs> do you ever stop? <laughs> <laughs> Does he ever stop? <laughs> One of these days, he, he was talking in my sleep. I got up this morning to, when he was telling me, I got up this morning, sat on the edge of the bed, and I said, I asked her to turn on the light so I could go to the restroom. And, and how about that, Utah? Yeah. Well, it's about 4.30 in the morning. 4.30, so I started. So I have my cell phone with me to make it like yeah. a flashlight so I can show you. I said, I can't, don't see any light. <laughs> and then I said, wait a minute, I, I forgot to open my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> and I wonder if it's dark. Oh, that's right. <laughs> She's always awake. That's why I hang out with her. She just wakes up. It's rare, rare for her to sleep through anything, any uh, action and commotion or noise. That's what you think. That's what I think. <laughs> yeah, that is what I think. So, what is the title of my uh, my talk? On the path, don't dig a trench. On the path. Don't dig a trench. So, so basically any path, but we're talking specifically about the Buddhist path of uh, uh, what is it, Shila Samadhi and Prajna. So discipline, hold still, get to the cushion, sit down, study, study with other people, study with yourself, train your mind, discipline, uh, stay on the path. Um, uh, samadhi, Samadhi is basically just means not separate. So. Whatever you look at, don't separate yourself from anything. When something happens, anytime you make a comment on anything, it may protect you, it may help you in some way, it may even be accurate or correct, but it doesn't seem to function in the long run. It doesn't seem to function to really help you, but get along with everything and not go to war with things. So, <clears throat> Sheila, sit down, train your mind, discipline. Look at the forms, use the forms to train your mind really diff difficult to just decide to be happy. Have you noticed that? It's just hard to do it. We all know what it is. We know what it feels like, but when we try to go there, it's like, it's like a house with no doors. You know, you can't, you can't figure it out. And so you end up being miserable outside the house, you know, with a bunch of maps <clears throat> with your smartphone trying to find out. <laughs> How do I find happiness? So that's the first part uh, on, on the path. So, Sheila, or Sanskrit word for discipline, or form, or hold still, or practice, find time every day, schedule yourself to get to the cushion, sit there. Uh, some of you consider yourself Buddhist, some, some of you don't consider yourself. I don't care. I am very interested in people training their minds. So you get to the cushion sit down or to the chair whatever you meditate in hold still look at the wall or look out at the floor if you don't want to look at a wall and see whatever's in front of you whatever rises in the mind don't add to it don't take away from it so don't add to it by commenting on it and don't take away from it by prematurely judging it there was a well, that shouldn't be happening well i shouldn't be thinking that well they shouldn't have done that i shouldn't have done that why do they do that all adding, adding, adding. It's not. It might feel helpful at the time because well, at least you're doing something. But really, from the point of view of of, uh, of the entire, uh, from the big picture, as they sometimes say, you're spinning in circles. Why? Because. Why? Because. Why? Because. Why? Because. Why not? Why, why, why should I do this? Shouldn't I? Shouldn't I? Should? Should I? Shouldn't I? Just a lot of waste of it, wasted energy doing what? Trying to find your way into the house, out of the house. <clears throat> and so, what's being said? Hold still. If you train yourself to hold still on the cushion, then you'll find that same stillness that you begin to locate and understand when you're sitting still. You'll begin to find that same stillness starts to arise in the most, the most uh, highly uh, active, in the in intense commotion of everyday life, of your job, your, your family, your friends, your whatever the hell you're doing. You'll find that you can actually be in the midst of a, a lot of chaos and confusion, and yet you're just still. You're just there. You're not accepting it. You'll never hear me say to anybody, just accept it. But I will say, just look at it. Just look at it. Don't jump in. Don't jump out. Don't shut down. So don't grasp at it. Don't push it away. 
and don't fight with it. The three poisons, passion, aggression, and ignorance. <clears throat> so, Sheila, sit down and observe. Train the mind to see clearly what is fundamentally true for yourself. It's not about believing in anything. It's not a belief system. Other people are doing that with their lives. They're fine. Go do it. It's not about believing in something. Nor is it about disbelieving in anything. It's about actually seeing what. You have six sense fields happening. Sense of touch, sense of taste, sense of smell, sense of seeing, sense of hearing sense of feeling, sense of thinking, just like we receive sounds, we receive thoughts. You notice that? You're, 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 you have something to do with what you receive. And you, can, you can make a sound, you can hear a sound, you can participate, you can make music, you can make a racket. So we all can participate in all kinds of, and any one of those senses is a way of participation, but there's also a way of just receiving it. Just be an audience. Stay in the audience. You get on the stage, the next thing you know, you're a perpetrator or you're a victim. And you're beating somebody up or somebody's beating you up. <clears throat> it is kind of a, an artificial uh, artificial uh, stillness that we create. We sit down because when, often when we sit down to just hold still and look at the mind, all we see is all the commotion. The mind's doing this, doing that, doing this, doing that. So it takes a while. That's why it's called a practice. That's why it's called a path. Stay on the path. Sheila, discipline. And then samadhi, or see what is true. And what is true? Not separate. So when I say uh, not separate, I'm, I'm not necessarily saying we're all one, but I'm saying see the way in which we're not separate. from. We have our separation. I mean, I'm over here. You guys are there. The trees are outside the building. The sun is out there, the clouds, cars going by, and so on. It's all separate, <clears throat> separated. Things are separated. Our fingers are separate, one from the other. So things are separated, but fundamentally, it's just one situation happening, not separate. So discipline, or Sheila, discipline on the path. See what is true, or samadhi. Samadhi is a Sanskrit word for not to. See what is true. See that you're, even though there's a, a strong separation between yourself and what you want and between yourself and, and what is coming at you or something you don't want, something you want, yeah, ice cream, something you don't want uh, uh, to be overweight, you know, com complicated situation, very simple, but not, not in there's so many, the causes and conditions that come in there are just so complicated, you can't really manipulate it. I'm not saying you couldn't have a little bit of luck. And if you start having a little bit of luck, then you'll think that applies to everybody you write about. People will think that that you know what they need to know and they'll buy your book, you can make a lot of money and then your plan won't work. <laughs> and then they'll write bad reviews <laughs> of your book. So it's very, very individual. It's very, very personal to to when you come to the cushion, sit down, see the way in which your mind is doing something that nobody else's mind probably is doing. The way your cloud formations, the way your uh, emotions, feelings, thoughts, memories come and go or not. It's totally different. So it's, it's, it's a very intimate situation for you to actually see what is true for yourself. So the path is <clears throat> uh, discipline. The path is see what is true for yourself. Nothing to believe. I don't promote anything other than sitting, but I don't do that unless you come to me. If I met you in uh, Starbucks, I'd just listen to what you had to say. I would never mention meditation or Buddhism or anything. I would just say, Starbucks coffee isn't very good. What are you doing here? <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of bitter. Let's go to Big Beast. Or let's go to where do they make coffee at? Brazil. Honduras. Honduras. <laughs> Honduras. We can get on and pick up some mahogany so Stephen can make mahogany guitars. Got it all covered. So stay on the path, discipline. See what is on the path. See the path. Samadhi or see what is true for yourself. See it yourself. What you see may not agree with other people, but it won't be an opinion. If it's an opinion, 
It's basically this bullshit. <laughs> Sorry to use such a strong Sanskrit word. Yes. Um, I read a haiku last night. And since I read it, I can't stop crying. Um, and I, whatever, I don't know where that comes from. But um, this is on the autumn road. I'm the only one around. Yeah, that's about show. <laughs> I don't think you're crying because it's true. When you see something that's fundamentally true, it, it's heartbreaking. Has anyone else read that by Basho? <clears throat> it's a road in the middle of the night. There's, there's no one there. There's no one on the road. But no one going on it. That's another kind of path. If you actually see what the path is, there's no movement. There's no one there. So we, we begin to get flashes of no self, and it has it can have that kind of uh, that kind of emotional quality. Think, where is that coming from? It's just a just a haiku, just a few simple words that somebody uh, hundreds of years ago wrote down in another language that was translated into English, and then yet when we read it, uh, because uh, Matsuo Basho was such an incredible, uh, incredibly spiritual uh, poet. So how can we be with all things? We're so incredibly alone. How can we be with all things? What? How can we be with all beings if we're so incredibly alone? <laughs> That's how it's done. Everyone's incredibly alone, but they're not separate. But you won't see the no separation unless you first acknowledge the aloneness and stop filling it up with bullshit. This is what we do when the title of the talk is Stay in the Path, Discipline, Meditation, and wisdom or seeing the truth for yourself. And this truth that we see is not separate. But the path to that separation means that ego is start, gonna start to crack apart. And we're gonna start to feel that loneliness. We're gonna feel like I'm I'm whoever I am, whatever I am, I'm 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 alone. So at, at first it starts it starts out as loneliness, and then it becomes just aloneness, just seeing that you're alone. It's called not to. When you're when ego is experiencing it him or herself, it's it's heart wrenching. It can be very, very difficult. And and everyone has uh, would go through this in a different way. Matsu Basho uh, couldn't have have written this had he not experienced that himself. That's a very famous poem of his. So path, seeing what's true. I mean path and then seeing not to that you're not separate, which is what you're referring to there. That's that part of the path. Seeing that it's not two, that you're alone. And then uh, we don't really dig a trench with that. <clears throat> when I say don't dig a trench, I'm saying don't take whatever is happening to you and uh, keep going over it. The negative uh, way that's sometimes talked about is, is someone is uh, unfair to you or mistreats you or something and rather than just seeing that rather than just seeing like you would if you're on the path and you're seeing what is true and there's actually wisdom is arising out of what's happening to see that the reason they're doing that the motivation for doing that is they're so unhappy and they can't stand their unhappiness so they want you to have some of it they want to get rid of that so they want to blame you or make you at fault or complain about you which is, of course, dig, starting to dig a trench. So that and it, so and the, and the trench is there. And so the, the way the trenches work is uh, it's fine until things get difficult, until that uh, so-called emotional tsunami comes along. And the first thing you go is right back in the trench again, blaming, blaming, Bla blaming this way or blaming that way. Not much different. No, no one's really to blame. We're not saying there aren't people who are creating difficult situation for everyone shouldn't be placed in another place, but they should be treated well. They should, they're human beings. I don't care how, how many people
people they've murdered. They, they need to be treated in such a way that so they can be uh, so they can be brought into uh, this uh, it's called compassion. So the, the punishment just doesn't work. It just creates more and more blame doesn't work. It just creates more just creates warfare. That's why the whole world is at war. So don't dig a trench. One time, like sometimes uh, I say, if someone has, if you have a story about something where someone has harmed you or you've done something where you've goofed up one time, say it one time, they shouldn't have done that. That's enough. Then get out of there. Don't keep going back through that. They shouldn't have done that. Why did they do that? I don't deserve this. Yeah, 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 yes. How do you get out of there? How do you get out of where? You said tell a story one time and then get out of there. And just just look at the path. Because if you if you tell the story more than once, then you're you're actually not, you're actually digging a trench with it. You're actually going back over and over and over, and it starts to make a groove. Like any habit, you get habituated to it. It's habitual patterns or the vasanas that come out of the eighth consciousness, which we've talked about before. That kind of something something we're here and then something happens and it triggers something that we have this intense overreaction to it. So the way we get out of it or the way we uh, work with that is, is through awareness. We just see, we just see that it's not, that what we're doing is uh, um, trying to uh, get our way, trying to find somebody that's at fault. Bailey. What do you mean by not to? I mean that when you're looking at me and you see someone else uh, and you think of yourself and you think of me or anyone else, that it's, there is a two-ness happening. There's a separation happening, but fundamentally, not two. Not, nothing is separate from anything else. Not two. Uh, this is what the, the basically the Buddha's way of saying it is. Uh, 2,500 years ago, his basic discovery. He didn't say, I'm the Buddha, make a bunch of golden idols and uh, bow down to me. All that's what we do because we, we got to remind ourselves what he said. And what did he say? Everything is dependently arisen. There's not a, there's no one really to blame. You can't blame. All you can do is, is help others. And that's why we take those, those four vows. I vow to be with all things. But in order to, to be with all things, you have to first stop, uh, slow down, and hold still and see what the all things actually are. And you'll see that they're, things are just arising. They're just arising. And so you don't object to it. You don't agree with it. You don't look away or distract yourself into some, you know, anything. The extreme version would be like drugs or like, uh, you know, too much Netflix. So you would, you would just see, you in order to see the, just like with the being alone, in order to really understand that, you have to see that everyone is alone. So that's another way of acknowledging uh, the, how separate everyone is, and yet how not separate. At the same time, it's called not to, non-duality. This is an ancient Indian philosophy that was there before the Buddha, called Advaita, not to. There's no, not two separate things anywhere. More. So it's a realization, not a thought. It starts out as a thought. Oh, not two. Hmm, interesting. Let me see. Looks like two to me. Everywhere I look, I see bad things and good things. I see happy things, sad things. You know, I see all the the extreme of that duality of life and death. Fundamentally, there this is not. It's not true. There is there is no life and death. Life and death are not separate. If you realize that, uh, you're fearless. Nothing can, nothing can take your freedom away because it's not based on conditions. It's a, it's an actual insight that uh, is not about information. You just you just see it, you just know it. Until you don't see it, uh, or until you do see it, then uh, continue to look at look at follow the path. That's why this path is here. It's not to get a bunch of people to join a club. It's so you personally can see deeply within who you are and what this is about. That's what it's for. That's why this old man's sitting here.
and not down in Florida, sitting in the sunshine in Sarasota. Lisa. Um, so I wonder, is, is this the same thing then that um, Whiting is talking about? I've been reading the Platform Sutra, mm -hmm. and he says, whether it's a past thought, a present thought, or a future thought, let one thought follow another without interruption. Once a thought is interrupted, the Dharma body becomes separated from the material body. Is that yeah, that yeah. separation? Yeah, that's that's we keep we keep thinking there's something else other than what's happening. Something else that we actually we actually wrestle with our thought patterns. And it's very difficult because sometimes uh, when, initially when we might start meditating, we might start having really negative thoughts that we feel like aren't are, aren't are not our thoughts. Like, where is this coming from? So we want to stop that. So then we there might be techniques for so we won't feel that way, or so we'll feel better. So, but Wei Neng is you know back centuries ago uh, understood this. Don't don't interrupt anything. Don't. That's why we say here, just observe, just observe. I say it every every time I sit here and teach uh, how to meditate and basically the most important thing is well a few of them one is hold very still and then watch what keeps moving and don't interrupt it don't interrupt the, that flow with your ideas that it should it shouldn't be is that helpful yeah yeah so uh, that's a great when we study that what days are we studying the platform scripture we used to on saturday huh? we used to on saturday okay we're not studying it well they're so studying traverse. in traverse city though well that's good Glad somebody's still covering that. <laughs> so, um, is is it are any questions about about following the path and, and not digging a trench? That whole using that whole dynamic to say, just take whatever's coming towards you, be with it. That's why we uh, have that vow. It's not easy because what's what's happening in your life? You almost want to say, well, shouldn't it? this like this can't be right? Shouldn't I be? medicating myself or do you need to be doing something? Why am I feeling this? As soon as you say why, not we shouldn't say why, we need to say it a little bit, but we overdo that. Why am I, why is this happening? Why am I doing this? Why is this going on? You immediately, if you want to say like this, well, there's a mouse. Okay, well, it's not really a mouse. It's a stuffed mouse. There's a stuffed mouse. Why? Why is there a mouse? As soon as you say why, you don't really you don't really continue to look. You start to look around for something else, and you totally ignore the mouse. It'd be better to say, "What is that?" It's a mouse, a stuffed mouse. So. <laughs> <clears throat> <clears throat> Um, the trench is, it's like a rut. Yes, it's a rut. And once we get to that, where we're actually digging a trench or we're in yeah. the rut, it seems like it's, that's kind of an automatic thing that we don't seem to have a lot of control over it anymore. Mm -hmm. Or maybe we don't have any control over it whatsoever. Probably not. Um, so what happens that causes us to stop being in that trench? Awareness. If you really are aware that if you see it, if you're aware of all the way in which you keep uh, uh, wanting things to be different than they are, the way in which you keep insisting on your way, then that trench happens. But the awareness practice through sitting and watching what moves and watching what moves and meditating, meditating uh, helps us. There's no guarantee, but it helps us begin to see the way we, in which we create our own confusion, our own trenches our own uh, prison, a uh, prison of our thoughts and our ideas and our opinions. You know, we think the world is like this and we're, we're not going to look outside. So we, at some point we begin and everyone is different. We begin looking at our own very intimate situation. We sit down and we actually look at it and that, and that does not end necessarily. You may be looking at that for decades for the rest of your life. People don't talk about, uh, sometimes people talk about suddenly they realize or suddenly they understand something and their whole life is changed, uh, turned around. 
quite often this is what we keep looking for some some kind of a big change but actually what you're looking for you've heard me say this at least a dozen times maybe a hundred what you're looking for you're looking at whatever is in front of you at any given time if you're in the grocery store and you're looking at apples that's that's it that's it whatever your mind is doing right then that's what needs to be watched and I'm not saying just the apples. I'm saying everything that is arising because what you're quite often what we're doing is we're not looking at the apples. We're looking at our idea of apples. We're looking at which store we're in, who did it, why they're bruised, uh, how, why they're stacked that way. Don't they realize they're going to fall off? I mean, you know, it's just little commentaries that are tagged on little post-it notes on our whole life. Our whole life is nothing but post-it notes. And under it is maybe some apples. We miss our life. We actually miss the very life that's being served up to us. Every time you wake up, your your life is completely flooded with, with everything. And to begin to see that, uh, to begin to actually see that can be uh, the experience of uh, Basho or the experience that uh, uh, Jigme is having of suddenly seeing uh, this alone. You're actually alone. And that can be heartbreaking. It, it actually, that's how you, that's how compassion happens. You first have to, compassion has to, feeling with has to happen here. Stop rejecting you who you are in your life. Be genuine. Be who you are with no excuses, no apologies. And then that same feeling with or compassion, you can start to extend that out to others with their permission. So sit a lot. It seems the path has a trench-like quality. I mean, here we, you know, we sit, we yeah. set this routine. Yeah. So how do we know that we're not digging a trench that perpetuating our suffering as compared to digging a, a trench <clears throat> that brings our awareness to our suffering? Keep talking to me until you don't need to. We can go somewhere else and... To do something else but at this point since this is a situation then if you want that kind of help i'm ready to do that if you don't then i respect whatever you want to do with your life but if you want this kind of help keep talking to me more there seems to be a choicelessness with this type of trench though how do we know that we're not putting blinders on you don't. Too risky. You don't know. That's why we have the sitting practice. That's why we study. We uh, come together with other people and study this material like uh, the platform scripture and listen to what this guy said hundreds of years ago who, who lived in ancient China and practiced meditation. He had a few things to say. Most people are not interested in this. and that, That's fine. They can do other things. But those of us who are they can look and see what did he discover about the nature of mind? What did he, what did he discover about this, the nature of loneliness or aloneness? What did he discover about the nature of not interrupting anything? Very, very powerful. And, and you actually need to do it yourself. It's a transcendental do it yourself system. The, the teaching person, the Buddha uh, can't, we can't do it. No one can do it for you. You have to do it yourself. And my, function here is to encourage you to do it yourself. You know, in other words, keep return to the cushion, ask questions, return to the cushion, study and, and include this whole thing in your life. You're taking care of children. That's your, well, you and Brittany, that's your, what you do. So you, you've got an ideal situation to work on that all the time. You're always in some kind of an emotional dynamic with, Four-year-olds. <laughs> That's I can't imagine a better training ground than that. Shoka, how do forms help us uh, relate to that sense of not knowing? So the form, just like the sutras, or bowing, or or having a certain time when we study, a certain time when we get up, a certain time when someone rings the Hanan bell, uh, a, a certain structure for just training the mind. It's not about being over at the Y, which that's another form for training the body, just like your exercise program for yourself, certain kind of training. You have to have certain kinds of forms. 
this kind of form is about training the mind or training what we call the mind or the consciousness that keeps grasping at some things and rejecting other things and going to war. You notice that? It's just, it's just like we're always kind of a, a exception, a taking exception or at war or upset with something. And usually it's, if it's not with ourselves and it's with something out there, it's happening everywhere. It's the people who are in charge actually will take a whole country to war based on their own personal emotions. So the form, in this situation, the form gives us some kind of a container and, and a time container and a space container. It's time to sit. It's time, it's time to do what? Do nothing. All it says is just stylized nothingness. It's, it's uh, sometimes been called voluntary suffering because nobody wants to sit here and look at a wall all day long. It's boring. And it's also it's just irritating to watch your whole mind flicker by all the time and all of your little stories about yourself and about the world and everything, just uh, aggravating. So it's, it's voluntary. And some people, it's even more excruciating than that. They, they have to have something happening all the time. They have to be cleaning house or, or have the TV on or be doing their group jogging or doing something to, because if they just hold still, they start to suffer. And so this is like voluntary suffering, you know, not, not a half hour a week. I'm saying doing it every day, you're actually voluntary to, volunteering to sit down and look at the way you keep confusing yourself. So that's why you need the form. You need the, the space uh, form, building, cushion, wall, human body that's yours. And then you need a time. <coughs> the other, the, other uh, the way that uh, space presents itself is with time. Starting and stopping. Time to sit, time to stop sitting. More? Um. Well, I'm about to begin sewing my robe. Um, how does that function as more glue? It's just a way of, you've got a 2,500 year old lineage. Uh, it's not right, it's not wrong. It's just a way of working with the mind. It's called a spiritual path. The spiritual path is about transcending this life. It's not about believing in some kind of supreme being or disbelieving in it. You don't take any position on that. So the robe, the sewing the robe just, just helps you laminate yourself to this practice it's very hard to to sit down and do just like you've been in solitary retreat before it's very hard to be in a, in a retreat and just stay there and discipline yourself to watch the mind come and go and come and go and come and go and not fight with it to really make as a uh, trunk my uh, tibetan teacher once said uh, talked about training the mind is uh, making friends with yourself well if you're going to do that first you have to stop you have to stop uh uh, kind of wrestling with yourself. So you have to see the way in which you keep fighting with yourself. And it might take a while. So you keep taking exception or judging or evaluating or, or especially if you've been conditioned by someone else to not be too happy with yourself. We tend to get that mixed up. We get other people's feelings and emotions mixed up with our own. We start to have other people's stuff. When I say other people's, this is, this is a, a kind of a clue to the no separation happening. You follow me? Yeah. So, yes. Yes. Uh, from Maggie. She says, um, or asks, not being separate seems like a very unlonely situation. Mm -hmm. Is this true? Well, the, the path quality of seeing that uh, is to actually see how, uh, how part, part of the path is to see how very, very isolated we are in terms of our own uh, consciousness, our own awareness, we're, we're completely alone. But so that's the amazing part about it. There's this in, in, incredible aloneness, but that, that means that you are at the apex of everything that is. You, you, you are, you're not separate from the universe. But why wouldn't you feel alone? You realize that you're, you are, you're it. I'm not talking about your God or any of that. I'm just saying that you, your own consciousness, your own awareness, when you really see the way in which you, uh, in which your, your relationship to everything through the, through following a path, a disciplined path, you, you begin to see the way in which you're alone and the way in which you're not separate at the same time. It's called non-duality or not to, not separate. The very aloneness is not separate. That's why it's so alone. It doesn't have anything else. It doesn't even have a road in the middle of the night. 
It's just a way of it's a way of setting the stage to so that nothing is separate. So when we begin to tune into that, it, it can be very emotional because we've been avoiding that and we've been thinking everything is separate and we can somehow win and not lose. Probably not. But what we can do is we can see the fundamental nature of reality. We can see the we can see the nature of the world just based on what the Buddha said, or what uh, Huan Eng said, or any other Buddhist teacher. Let's see it for yourself, and then uh, the only word I can think of is freedom. You're not you're not in chain. You're not enslaved by anything. You're not you're not chained up by anything. Even even uh, even death is not not a threat because not separate. Life and death are not separate from each other. If you think they are, you're gonna you're gonna. What if I die? What will happen when I die? So you could say, well, don't get on. What will happen when you die? <laughs> Go ahead. What will happen when you die? I don't know. I'm not dead yet. I'm not dead yet. Not dead. <laughs> Doesn't that work? Can I ask you a question about that? What? Don't get smart with me. I'm serious. <laughs> about what I just said. What did you just say? I don't remember. You tell me. I don't remember <laughs> either. Not <laughs> darn, dead darn, dead. These darn oh, monks are getting I'm too smart. Dead <laughs> I'm not dead yet. I'm not, I'm death, not dead yet, huh? If life and death aren't separate. Yes. And you said you're not dead yet. Yes. How could that be? Saying dead and not dead. Yeah. It's like a Trump Rinpoche Jay once said, and it was really baffling to me back in the 70s. He said, listening to me is like listening to a dead man. I thought, what? That can't be. I mean, I can hear his voice. He doesn't act dead. He acts like he's enjoying himself. But he said that, and, and I, it took a long time to be able to understand what that, it just means not to. Life and death are not separate. You're no longer concerned about, you, you no longer are, are, are identified just with this body form. Because if you identify, if you think you are your body, then of course you're going to be terrified. But if you, if you, through realization, if you realize you're not separate from anything, not separate. So therefore, Therefore, the body could fall away. Not that we want it to. We'd like to hang around and talk some more. Yes. Um, a text from Anna Maria. Anna Maria. First of all, she, New York. she says she really Look. misses calling in. Texting has pulled me out of the Dharma talk for five minutes. <laughs> what did she say? She said it's if um, oh, she misses calling in yeah. because texting takes her away from hearing what yes. she said. Yeah. All right, so so here and it's anything. kind of chopped up, so I'm going <laughs> to do the best I can. Uh, she says, "Seems everything that comes out of one's mouth is about the person. Everything that is spoken, even their projection, is the speaker, is me speaking the words, i.e., their projection. But if no separation." Uh, then how do you discern their BS from helpful information? Oh, you don't have to. Stop trying to figure things out. <clears throat> Stay in your senses. Just, you know, trust trust yourself. Trust yourself. You've been given, you know, take a look in the mirror. You didn't make any of this stuff. At least if you did, you have amnesia. Or you would remember, yeah, I remember when I was making my ears. I really wanted really long earlobes like that guy. But, you know. I just, I forgot, and I was in the middle of making cheeks. So, you know, I'm making my cheeks, so I would look a certain way. We're not, we're not in charge of any of that. And so, don't, don't concern yourself with it. You know, just the plus and minus part is it's just a trap. Why? Because. Why? Because. Why? Because. Why? Because. It's a trap. It's circular. You actually find yourself on a total world in the middle of an amusement park. You, you can spend your whole life there. And from the point of view of uh, this understanding, you can spend lifetimes there. You might have to yell really loud to get somebody to come and help you. Yes, sir. 
avidya seems to be a barrier to, to being aware of the trench. Avidya is what? Ignorance. Ignorance. Yeah. Ignorance. And ignorance. Yes. Specifically of ignorance. So you don't. So yeah. you're. <clears throat> yes. You're digging a trench. You don't know that you're digging a trench. Yes. And you, so you're ignorant of it. Okay. You know, is there any way that we can look particularly at that yes. ignorance of the ignorance? Yes. Just see that you just do it. You can. The training part is that don't, don't do it more than once. If you say um, anything, say, uh, there I go again. That's ignorance. But it passes from, from the point of view of ego. Ego, it passes for, well, at least I know I'm doing that wrong. So it's a, it's, you know, it's a, it's a, um, What's the word for that? Stupid. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not stupid. It's a, it's it's a um, it's an excuse rather than actually looking at what's going on. It's like a band aid or something. It's, it doesn't really solve that. But to not name it uh, actually starts to reveal. It's like the image I often use is a lid on a jar. We might feel safer if we name something. Well, that's this. So that's that because we protected ourselves from what's in the jar. But the, the path of awareness is about not putting any lids on things. I mean, actually looking at your mind, looking at, at your emotions and your feelings, how they come up. And really related, if you can really relate to your own feelings and emotions, you, you can relate to anyone's. If you, if, you, if you stop going to war with yourself, you won't go to war with anyone. I mean, you, people will come, you know, maybe in the past you would have uh, someone come up to you accusing, blaming, or something like that. You might have, you know, been defensive and explained and everything. But uh, through seeing this uh, no self or or not to, and really seeing it deeply, we find ourselves maybe all at once, or maybe slowly, when someone comes at us with, uh, you know, uh, loaded weapons of whatever their argument is or they're accusing, uh, we see we see they're warlike. But what we, but instead of going to war and trying to stop that or fight with it, instead we see we see it completely. We see they're they're going to war because they're so miserable, they're so unhappy. People don't go to war because they're right. They go to war because they're they're unhappy. People want to be happy. A uh, question from Sandra and from Chuck. Yes, um, they got together and asked us. They did, yeah, Sandra. <laughs> His question, he's not dead yet, but he is right. Who's not dead yet? Is he accusing me of something? I don't know. I'm not accusing him of anything. <laughs> I think it was. Um, what, what, what is the question? That, that is the question. Oh, it's a statement? No, he says. Yes. He's not dead yet, but he is right, question mark. Maybe it's. He's not dead yet, but he is, right? Oh, oh okay. Maybe that's oh, okay. Yeah, I got it. Okay. He is not dead yet, but he is. So he didn't, is, so Sandra's punctuation. Come Sandra. You need to comment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You need a comment. You need a semicolon. He's not a grammar. Huh? He's not an um, English. Sometimes teacher. psychiatrists aren't able to handle that. <laughs> 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 so, not, oh, say, say it again. No, say it again. He, he's not dead yet, right? right. He's yeah. not dead yet, but he is, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was thought I thought he really was coming after me. I thought I, it's going to be really embarrassing for me to fight with Sandra on the, on the internet. <laughs> yes. And then, Chuck, Chuck. And, and then we have about three minutes. Left. Okay. So Chuck's question, if I'm not my body, what am I? Not separate. There, there's a body identification that comes into being that that's how we're able to experience. Uh, we're able to ha uh, be, uh, have this uh, incredible situation of things moving this way and that and life and death and hot and cold and bright and rainbows and gray and, and everything, just an incredible, you know, uh, food, sounds, music, you're able to experience all of this, but you're not separate from all of that. The example I'm often giving, given is, you know, you might think your mind is your own, 
But if I say, uh, 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 green giraffes, you see them. I've just entered your mind space. I've just gone inside your mind and created some stuff without your permission. All you have to do is listen. I mean, you know, it's sure, sure it's a silly example, but, but the world is functioning like that. The, the interpenetration is so incredible. The interpenetration is so incredible that, that, that life and death become kind of secondary uh, issues. The, the main issue is how do we say, how do we really help people that are suffering? How do we really do that? So there's, sure, you are your body, but you're not just limited to that. It actually goes beyond that. Uh, sometimes uh, in the in the, old, in the new age uh, situation, it's called the aura or called the astral body or the causal body. And there's all kinds of, there's all kinds of philosophy on this and I'm not promoting anything. I don't believe in anything. I don't believe anything I'm even saying. I don't need to. I don't need to believe what I say, nor do I need to believe, disbelieve it. And I encourage you to take the same attitude with everything, including your mind. Don't, don't, don't believe it. Don't disbelieve it. Don't, don't, any thought that arises, don't add to it by saying that's true or add to it by saying that's false. Do nothing with it. And then it'll find its own particular place in your mind stream that will be appropriate to your uh, glomeruli in your kidneys. Yep, no. huh? We're going to come up with a different cell. For you. <laughs> I'm, I'm using glomerulus too much. We're, 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 we're working on it. Okay. So they're coming up with a new image because people are getting... Yes, they're getting tired. Of, no, 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 we can't use that one because it's... How about alveoli? Huh? Alveoli. What's the alveoli? Those are the sacs in your lung. Pardon me? Sacs in your lung. They're too common. Uh, let's, <laughs> let's just call it an anthill. Follow up from Zandrum. So Kazan is dead, correct? Yes. <laughs> yeah. So the man is dead. So what's it like being dead? Alive. <laughs> dead for a while. Dead and alive. There's, there's no, there, it's, it's like a sleep, when you go to sleep at night, you know, and you wake up, you see the contrast there. I'm awake, I'm doing stuff, and then I go to sleep, and then I'm in another dimension, another, or, or maybe you're not dreaming at all. But that's not a problem, is it? The sleeping and being awake. It's just two different, uh, two different words for the same thing. What about dreamless sleep? Well, you won't be having any dreams then. <laughs> what about it? <laughs> well, you're you're making this comparison of sleeping, but dreamless sleep is be a careful. Problem. Be careful. Yeah, I'm listening to you. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like there's just what you said. There's a hole in that. And it seems there like is dreamlessness. Yeah, is, there is. And um, the Tibetans put a lot of value on that state. If being able to wake up in dreamless in a dreamless state is uh, they say is the equivalent to enlightenment. Yeah, as far as I see it. What's your question? My question is, how is that like dying? Or being dead? Or being dead? Because it's both there and not there. It's like, uh, I'll give you an example. Uh, maybe this will work better for you. And then, then we've got to stop because we're going to do a daily Dharma gathering in about 15 minutes, which is another Dharma talk. What am I talking about? Um, something. Something, something, something. Uh, act out of clarity or don't act. Yeah, act out of clarity or don't act. I'll be talking about that in 15 minutes. Um, just like this is and isn't but because of the nature of this particular uh, uh, gross dimension that we're in this this is moving so slowly that it seems very solid but in your dream uh, in your in the dream situation it both is just like those giraffes are you know are they are they exist or non-exist didn't I just create some giraffes in your mind green green giraffes yeah how many just one. Huh? 
three, but I, I try to, as soon as you say that, mine turn orange because I don't like to listen to you like that anymore. Yeah. I, don't, I don't want you in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's right. Because <laughs> I just saw orange ones too. So I changed my mind. Let's make them orange. <laughs> <laughs> They're already orange. Yeah. Well, I knew that. Do you think I didn't know that? <laughs> <laughs> so okay um we will close and dedicate the merit and then we will uh wait 15 minutes and then we'll talk on daily drum gathering please join us there if you can thank you thank you we do have our donation boxes out in the hallway so please fill them up Make this penetrate into all places so that we and every sentient being together can realize the Buddha's way. Directions of three worlds, all Buddhas, all venerable ones, Bodhisattvas, Mahasattvas, the great Prajna Paramita.